morning, everyone, and welcome to the workshop on control theory and partial differential equation. It's an honor for me to introduce to Professor Enrique Fernandez Cara, who is one of the strongest mathematicians in the area of control theory and partial differential equation today. Professor Fernandez Cara received his doctorate in 1981 in France under the guidance of Roland Glowitzki, and currently he has already oriented 10 PhD students and has 19 descendants. Likewise, his scientific production is high, having published 180 articles and has approximately 3,180 citations. He is chair professor in the Department of Numerical Analysis and Differential Equation of the University of Seville. On this occasion, Professor Fernandez Cara will give the plenary entitled Recalling some local and global controllability results for nonlinear partial differential equation. Welcome, Dr. Fernandez Cara, and you can start. Thank you very much uh, for this very nice uh, presentation. Uh, I'm uh, uh, honored too to uh, be here and to participate in this uh, wonderful workshop where I have been uh, uh, able to. Uh, to listen to some uh, excellent uh, talks. Uh, I will try to speak about uh, some uh, more or less uh, recent results uh, on the local and global controllability uh, for nonlinear uh, PDs that I'm going to, to, to specify in a few moments. Uh, this is the plan. I will begin by recalling some definitions very briefly and uh, uh, recalling also uh, well-known results for uh, linear systems. Then I will concentrate on quasi-linear parabolic uh, partial differential equations, and I will try to explain how we can uh, obtain some theoretical and numerical results. Uh, then, uh, more briefly, I will speak of similar results for other PDs and systems, including Navier-Stokes uh, variants. And I will end, I will try to end with some open questions. Uh, all the systems we are going to consider have this structure, which uh, you find a linear or nonlinear uh, evolution equation with the control in the right hand side, V of V, uh, which lives in a space, capital U. And uh, the purpose is, in all cases, to get the uh, either uh, approximate or null or exact to the trajectory's controllability for the system. And as you may know, uh, these concepts are well defined by these properties. Uh, for example, we say that the system is approximate, approximate uh, controllable if uh, for any uh, initial y not and final yt uh, elements of h and any epsilon, we can find the control v that drives the system from Y0 to YT. In a similar way, we can define the null controllability property and the exact controllability to the trajectories. Our purposes here will be to uh, prove the existence of controls that do the work, approximate, null, or exact controls, and also to show how can we uh, compute them. Let me give some motivations on controllability. Uh, there are many of them, but I have uh, selected three of them. The first one is uh, automatic driving. This is a controllability problem. Yeah, we want a uh, vehicle uh, capable of uh, uh, viewing the, the environment, uh, sensing the environment, uh, taking decisions uh, uh, after uh, the information that has entered and moving safely without any human uh, action, or at least with very little human action. Another example of motivation, another example that the a problem that can motivate the controllability uh, of a system is the desire of uh, act on natural environments in order to reduce or even eliminate pollution. Uh, this is the, the goal uh, of uh, many works that have been uh, uh, begun in uh, started in uh, 2018 
uh, in order to eliminate uh, the garbage patch in the ocean. For example, in the case of the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, which is enormous uh, uh, with a surface approximately equal to three times the surface of France, uh, the work is being done by uh, a tool uh, named the Ocean Cleanup System 001, invented by a Dutch uh, engineer, Boyin Slat, in 2013, and that is operating since uh, three years, which is uh, designed to collect uh, the garbage, uh, to collect the trash, and to put the trash in some critical points and to uh, transport them to, uh, to us in order to, uh, to process them. Of course, there are many controllability uh, questions related to these operations. For example, uh, where uh, do we have to start operations in order to get uh, an optimal uh, result, which is the good shape, the good shape of the, uh, of the ocean cleanup system? Where do we have to uh, locate uh, accumulation points, etc.? And the third and also important uh, application of uh, controllability is uh, uh, the control of diabetes. The control of diabetes is uh, the, the subject of a lot of research nowadays. Diabetes is the excess of uh, high blood sugar due to the absence of insulin in an individual. It is not curable but it is controllable. I hear the idea, of course, is to uh, plan, uh, to planify uh, uh, an action on the individual based on regular exercise, diet plans, etc., in order to get correct levels of insulin and uh, sugar uh, during a long time. Okay, I'm going to consider uh, the following uh, partial differential equations in this talk. The quasi-linear parabolic equation of this kind in which the nonlinearity is inside the coefficient, uh, the diffusion coefficient of the equation. Also, a nonlinear non-local parabolic of this kind in which uh, we have also a nonlinearity located in the same place, but now the nonlinearity is uh, global in the sense that it depends uh, on the integral, the special integral of y. And then we will speak a little bit about the uh, Navier-Stokes equations and some variants and some uh, similar systems uh, like Boussinesque and others. Let me recall very briefly that for linear problems, in which the coefficient that we have uh, shown in the previous slide is constant. For linear systems, the controllability properties are nowadays uh, very well known. It is known that uh, this system is uh, approximately null and uh, also we have exact controllability to the trajectories. And that uh, since uh, several decades, uh, we have been able to apply several techniques, different techniques, to get these results. Techniques based on Kalman inequalities, the unique continuation property, the method of moments, etc. Uh, as you may know, uh, this result uh, are rather uh, general character for linear problems and can be extended in a relatively easy way to other many other non-scalar systems like the Stokes or Seen, etc., to semi-linear heat equations under some conditions and hypotheses, to parabolic elliptic systems, etc. And let me also recall that for the computation of approximate or null controls for systems of this kind, there have been techniques mainly of two kinds. The first kind where Essentially, we are looking for minimal L2 norm controls that are based on the observability inequalities that can be derived for the uh, adjoints. And also, 
uh, second family of techniques based directly on Kalimann inequalities and some ideas from uh, Fulsikov and Ivanovilov that have been applied uh, successfully uh, too. Okay, I go back to the quasi-linear uh, problem. This is the system. We have a non-linearity of this kind and uh, an assumption on A. A is going to be assumed uh, regular enough uh, and satisfying an uh, inequality uh, of this kind uh, and uh, strictly positive uh, for all X, T and uh, R. A recent result that we have obtained uh, in collaboration with uh, Juan Limaco and Irene Maringaite uh, says that uh, we have uh, null controllability, local null controllability for the system. I mean, there exists epsilon such that if we take a small y not, small initial state in the norm H2 less or equal to epsilon, then it can be proved that there exist controls V that moreover can be uh, chosen regular enough that lead the solution of the system to zero. There exists V such that for this V, the solution to the system, the solution to the system satisfies Y of capital T equal to zero. Uh, very briefly, I will uh, recall uh, the main ideas of the proof that rely on the work by Fusikov and Emanuelov for other more simple problems and uh, read as follows. First, first, we rewrite the problem as a nonlinear equation in an appropriate space. This is the key point in the proof of this result. And this is in fact the key point of the method, not only for this system, but also for many others. We, we, we have to choose capital X and capital Y, appropriate spaces. X is a space of couples state control that, is, that satisfy uh, several properties. And the first of them is this one. The first of them is this one where we have introduced uh, appropriate weights, rho and rho naught, with the essential property, with the important property that they go to infinity as T goes to capital T. So X is a space of uh, state controls in which Y vanishes at capital T. There are, of course, many other properties, but they are not, uh, it is not so important to emphasize them at this point. And then I define uh, capital Y as a space of uh, right hand sides. Uh, right hand side that I could put here in the right hand side of the equation, and uh, an initial, uh, initial data, initial uh, state. Uh, why not? Okay. Uh, with good choices of capital X and capital Y, it is possible to apply an inversion theorem to this equation, a local inversion theorem of the Lewis-Sternix kind uh, to this equation. So we can solve for small f, in particular for f equal to zero, and for small capital, uh, uh, small y not, this equation, and we can find a solution to this problem for small y not. This is the idea. Uh, in fact, the idea is important not, not only because it provides existence, but uh, also because it provides a method for the computation of y -bull. I mean, uh, if we want to solve the equation f of y v equal to zero, uh, why not? What we can do for regular f is to apply an algorithm of the quasi-Newton kind that is described here. And we start from a uh, y not uh, v not uh, initial uh, couple at x, and then we uh, compute at each n uh, a new couple y n plus one v n plus one from the old y n v n 
minus G, capital G of zero, zero, and G is nothing but the inverse uh, to the left of F at zero, zero, applied to F of Y naught, V naught. This uh, very simple formula provides a sequence, uh, Y N, V N, that can be proved to converge if Y naught, uh, V naught is uh, sufficiently uh, close to the solution. This can be proved to converge uh, rather quickly, rather quickly to the solution of the problem. And in practice, notice that uh, to apply this formula is nothing to solve a new controllability problem for a linear equation of this kind. This is equivalent to solve a linear uh, controllability problem of this kind. And uh, so the, uh, the main uh, idea of the proof, uh, and also the main idea of the computation uh, relies on uh, the technique that we have to apply in order to get a new controllability for problems of this kind. Uh, very briefly, I will uh, recall that uh, a good uh, technique to solve the null controllability that is here consists of minimizing this quantity subject to uh, V belongs to L2, which is a good space for computation of controls, and Y is the associated state. Again, I emphasize and enhance that uh, if rho is something that goes to infinity as T, goes to capital T, when we minimize this quantity, automatically we are obtaining a state that uh, behaves as we want it and uh, at the capital T. I mean, uh, Y capital T is equal to zero. So the, 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 the work, the task that we have to perform in order to apply this algorithm is at each step, at each step to solve a problem of this kind. And a problem of this kind, uh, in view of uh, techniques from calculus of variation, can be uh, shown to be equivalent to the solution of a lax Milken problem of this other kind, uh, which, uh, in view of the good definitions of rho and rho naught, possess a unique solution. So at each end, we have to solve problems of this kind that enter the uh, general theory of uh, lax milgram uh, problems and then can be approximated via uh, finite elements uh, in a rather standard way. So at the end, at each end, what we have to do is to solve either a problem of this kind where pH is a finite uh, dimensional subspace of P or uh, if we want to work a little better, a mixed uh, approximation of the same problem with well chosen uh, uh, so finite dimensions of spaces of uh, typical H1 uh, spaces in time and space. Okay, so uh, an important idea is that here uh, with this kind of a Approximation, we, we, we perform uh, approximations in space and time simultaneously. I mean, uh, we work on subspaces of a space capital P of functions that depend on X and T. So uh, we work, if you want, uh, in a rather symmetric way with respect to space and time. Let me uh, show you uh, the results of some numerical experiments to, uh, to illustrate all these ideas. In this first uh, numerical experiment, uh, the problem is one dimensional, one dimensional in space. So we want to solve an equation like this uh, in the, the product of the Cartesian product of uh, uh, an interval times zero t and uh, little omega, the uh, domain where we are applying the control is a subinterval of this kind. This is the domain, the space-time domain, the horizontal axis is uh, the spatial axis and the vertical axis is the time. 
uh, and uh, this is an initial mesh used for the problem. All the computation have been uh, performed with uh, the help of the uh, FreeFem uh, software. And we have uh, used in particular uh, adaptive uh, uh, mesh uh, techniques in order to improve the results. So this is the initial mesh. And this is the final mesh that we have found uh, after uh, applying the algorithm. And this is the result, the computed null control that we find. This is the computed null control, the null control. You see that the, the support of the control is, as I said, little omega times zero t. And this is the associated computed state. Uh, you see that the state initially behaves at the sinus and it's zero at capital T. In fact, it is zero uh, before capital T. And uh, as expected, it goes to zero even exponentially. So uh, this is a good result, a good uh, uh, an efficient uh, resolution, numerical resolution of the problem. This is the evolution of the error at the logarithmic scale. Yeah, you see that the convergence rate is rather uh, fast of order uh, almost two. Let me now show a second uh, experiment, a second experiment in the two dimensional case. I mean, now omega is uh, the square, uh, zero one times zero one. And we have uh, taken a sub square uh, little omega as the control domain. This is the initial uh, state, and we have taken an oscillating, rather oscillating uh, coefficient in order to uh, force the problem to be uh, non trivial. This is the space time domain in this case. The vertical axis is time, and the horizontal axis are uh, x1 and x2. And this is the result. You see that the control, well, in fact, uh, in three dimensions, it is more difficult to visualize the result. So I have uh, shown here in this slide, just a cut at x1 uh, equal to 0 0.68. And, but this, in my opinion, sufficiently illustrative. You have here the control, the control uh, from time zero to time 0 0.5 uh, begins to work just at time t equal to zero and uh, stops its work before uh, capital T. And this is the state, the state uh, as uh, was uh, imposed has a sinusoidal uh, initial shape and goes to zero also exponentially as t goes to capital T. It is important and interesting to see that the control also goes to zero as t grows um, approaches t capital T as well as y. And this is a good news. This is a good news because uh, it makes this makes the control uh, applicable in, in practice. The, Minimal L2 control has not this property. Contrarily, the minimal L2 control uh, has a tendency to oscillate as uh, T uh, approaches capital T. Uh, so it has to be regularized before uh, application. And uh, the method uh, gains in the sense of uh, uh, having a uh, less uh, norm for the for, for, for the control because it is the minimal L2 control, but at the same time, it's more difficult from the uh, practical uh, application viewpoint, viewpoint because uh, it has to be regularized before uh, taking exactly the values it provides. Uh, let me uh, make some comments now on the on the results, on the theoretical and uh, numerical results that have been mentioned. First, we have recently obtained similar results for uh, more involved in equation which the nonlinearity is of this kind. So uh, A depends on the gradient of Y, not on Y. 
uh, this is uh, at present submitted and uh, uh, but uh, the result uh, that we have uh, obtained uh, says more or less the same that the, the previous result. Uh, there are, of course, many other extensions that can be uh, imagined and worked. Uh, and one of them that I think is rather interesting concerns uh, phase field solidification systems of this kind, in which Y and P are respectively a velocity and a pressure distribution uh, of a fluid. Tau is a temperature. Again, we find a non-linear diffusion for the temperature, and U1 and U and U2 are phase functions, uh, phase field functions uh, that uh, indicate the level of solidification of the salt, uh, of the fluid. Uh, in some previous uh, papers, we have worked uh, with the linear version of the temperature equation. Uh, in collaboration with uh, Fagner, uh, Raruna, and Bianca Calzabara. And now uh, the problem uh, can be, uh, the, the, the results can be extended to this situation in which uh, the nonlinearity is present uh, as before. Uh, okay, there are many other extensions, possible extensions and uh, uh, results that can be uh, uh, considered uh, in connection with this uh, first uh, model. Let me now speak uh, more briefly about uh, uh, non-local, non-linear parabolic equations in which uh, uh, the situation is uh, similar to the one before, but now A depends not on Y directly, but on the integral of Y, uh, the special integral of Y, and we thus have a non-local non-linearity. Uh, there have been a, a set of works uh, where we have obtained local null controllability together with numerical results, uh, similar to, 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 to the result that we have, uh, I have shown uh, before. And uh, more recently, we have been able to get uh, 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 the local exact controllability to the trajectories of this problem. Uh, this is interesting because for the local exact controllability to the trajectories, uh, we need to work with a linear problem in which there, uh, there are terms non-local in space. And uh, so uh, it is much more delicate to work uh, with this uh, system and uh, special techniques have to be applied. Uh, special techniques based on the analysis of non-local in space uh, uh, linear problems. Uh, but uh, everything works, uh, everything works. And uh, even for the non-linear problem, we are able to get uh, the desired result. And another interesting extension of this uh, problem concerns the ladizanskaya smagorinsky model of turbulence which has uh, this aspect, uh, this uh, structure, in which uh, we don't have an equation, we have a system because the unknowns are Y and P, again, uh, uh, velocity field and uh, pressure. And the coefficient is non-linear, uh, non-locally and in the gradient of Y. Uh, this was, uh, uh, worked uh, several years ago, and uh, we got uh, again for problems of this kind the uh, local results and numerical, uh, and we were able to uh, perform also numerical uh, experiments uh, successfully. Let me speak now about the Navier Stokes equations and uh, some uh, extensions of the system. Okay, for this equation, it is very important, we are going to see this, uh, the kind of uh, boundary condition that I put here. In the case of the Dirichlet condition, in the case of the Dirichlet condition Y, as is written in this slide, we, at present, we only know that the problem is locally exactly control, uh, controllable to the bounded trajectories. 
I mean, uh, some time ago, uh, I mean, I think that uh, more than, <laughs> I think that 30 years ago, uh, Jacques Rillion's uh, conjectures that uh, this equation uh, with these conditions, with these boundary conditions, is uh, uh, approximately a null controllable with no uh, restriction on the size of y naught. Globally approximate and globally null controllable. This is open. Nobody has uh, proved this for the moment. This is open. Everything, uh, everything tends to. Uh, uh, imagine to suggest that the, the answer to this conjecture is yes, and that the, the result is true, but uh, it, for the moment it has not been uh, proof by anyone. What we know for this problem is uh, only uh, partial uh, answers. And one of the partial answers is this one. We know that uh, if we fix a solution y hat p hat with y hat in l infinity a bounded uh, trajectory i mean if we fix a solution like this and we take y not sufficiently near y hat at zero for example sufficiently near in the norm h1 then it is true that there exist v there exist controls such that this the associated solution y coincide at capital T with y hat. This is a local result because we are uh, necessarily uh, uh, starting near y hat at zero. And the idea of the proof is uh, to, to argue uh, in a manner similar to the, to the proof of the result that I have uh, explained before. First, we rewrite the Except to the trajectory controllability problem that is here as a new controllability problem with a very simple change of variable. And then we argue on W as before. Of course, it is not uh, easy because uh, an appropriate uh, uh, Kalman inequality uh, that asserts the existence uh, of, uh, uh, of solutions to the linearized problem is needed, but uh, this can be done. In fact, it was done uh, several years ago. This is what can be said. Essentially, this is what can be said when y is equal to zero on the boundary. Here are some uh, numerical results that we have obtained uh, some time ago uh, in order to illustrate uh, the situation. For example, if y hat, if y hat is the Posse uh, flow that is given by these uh, identities, uh, it is uh, a stationary solution of the Navier-Stokes equation, and this is a representation of the Poisson flow. Uh, flow. This is these are the uh, iso regions of y one uh, of the first component, and these are of course the uh, the velocity fields. Okay, if we take uh, y hat equal to this uh, solution, then uh, with a domain like this. This is space, uh, and this is time again. Uh, the vertical line is time with a domain like this and an appropriate uh, 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 approximation of the problem. We are able to uh, get uh, the good result. For example, we start from this initial state that is uh, completely different from the uh, post-sale flow, and after some time, we uh, act uh, on the system. And we approach, uh, as you see, the post flow without any problem. We have also uh, uh, some experience, experiments. Uh, we have also the results of some experiments uh, for non-stationary uh, fluids, like the Taylor Green uh, vortex flow, uh, whose uh, velocity field is given by this expression and has this. Uh, uh, aspect. Uh, this is the iso regions for y1, and this is the iso regions of y2. And uh, this is the, in this case, in this experience, this is the space time domain and the mesh, as you see, with many elements and a lot of variables and a lot of unknowns. 
starting from this uh, state that is again completely different from the Taylor Green uh, uh, flow, we get uh, after some time something that approaches uh, the Taylor Green flow and uh, near t equal to one, which is the final time, the final time, we get uh, the Taylor Green flow. So we are able to uh, to design, uh, to find, to, to controls that uh, make the work, that approach exactly to uh, uh, the trajectory uh, under the condition that we start of uh, uh, something that is near to the to the, the side, uh, to the target uh, uh, y hat. This what can be said about the local results. Recently, Coron, Marbach, and Sueur have obtained a very interesting result, asserting that we have global null controllability for the Navier-Stokes uh, equations under the condition of changing the boundary conditions. Here, as you see, we do not uh, impose y equal to zero, but we impose y times n equal to zero, n is the uh, unitary normal to the boundary, to the, to the spatial boundary, lateral boundary, and uh, kind of uh, Fourier uh, or Robin uh, condition uh, for the tangential uh, component that is written in the form d of y, d of y is the symmetrized gradient of y times n plus a function, a given function, a given regular function um, multiplied by y, the tangential uh, component of this one, uh, of, of all this, equal to zero. These are called the navier slick conditions. Uh, they are used sometimes in order to uh, uh, model uh, some kinds of flows and some kinds of boundaries. And for these conditions, uh, Coron, Marbach, and Sue have proved that independently of the, of the size of why not, if we take y not in L2 with divergence equal to zero and satisfying this condition, independently of its size, there exists a control V and an associate solution y and p that uh, vanishes at capital T. So uh, they have obtained the result that uh, everybody uh, wants to obtain uh, when directly conditions are imposed. Uh, anyway, it is not, uh, it is not, uh, uh, it is reasonable to think, to believe that uh, the ideas of the proof that they have done, uh, they have uh, provided, uh, maybe can be applied for the original problem and uh, maybe uh, in the future uh, will give a similar result uh, with direct left, uh, conditions for what. Uh, the argument is rather complex. Uh, it, it has essentially three steps. In the first step, they perform a scaling argument that converts the initial uh, time uh, interval zero t into a much larger uh, interval, uh, interval uh, zero t uh, over by, uh, epsilon. And then uh, they, work, they work in the first part of this interval in zero t as if uh, there were no viscosity in the, in the fluid. This way, uh, an uncontrolled boundary layer is generated. And in the second part of the, of the uh, interval, they try to uh, dissipate. They, 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 they perform some uh, uh, particular choices of the control that uh, make dissipate the boundary layer uh, before uh, time capital T over epsilon. And uh, so it is very complex and very uh, technical at some points, but it works. Uh, I'm going to finish uh, this uh, part of the, of the talk uh, by speaking of the Businesque system. The Businesque system uh, invented by Businesque, uh, uh, corresponds to a situation where the flow is strongly influenced by heat sources. Uh, for the Businesque system, 
we have to consider not only the uh, velocity field and the pressures in the case of the navi stokes but also the temperature and the effects of the temperature of the flow the heat flow in fact this is an illustration of Boussinet's effects on the landing of a, a craft uh, it is important to take into account not only the uh, the velocity that the uh, that the, the aircraft is uh, uh, adopting, but also the effect of heat. Local exact, well, this is the Businex system. This is Businex system with Navier uh, sleep conditions. If we put here y equal to zero, of course, uh, we get the Businex system with direct conditions. Uh, the local exact controllability to bounded trajectories uh, of the Businex system was obtained uh, several years ago by Guerrero, and uh, and so this uh, this is of course uh, the the similar result of the uh, of the controllability result we know for the local controllability result we know for the navier stokes equation. And recently, we have been able also to extend uh, the method by Coron, uh, Marbach, and uh, Sueur to uh, the Businex system with navi slip conditions. So uh, the, the same technique can be applied here. It is not uh, uh, completely trivial because we have to take into account the effect of the heat uh, in the equations, but uh, uh, with uh, some work we, we have been able to uh, extend the result to uh, this case. So, for the Businesque system, uh, written uh, either with uh, Dirichlet conditions or with uh, Navi slip conditions, we get essentially the same uh, results uh, as for the Navi Stokes equations. I'm going to finish now with some open questions uh, that are left to the end, and uh, that. Uh, maybe can uh, can be uh, uh, considered for the continuation of these results for quasi linear parabolic uh, equations of this kind of course it is open whether or not we have global null control i mean the null control for large why not for large initial state in fact it is also open if we have uh, or not uh, global approximate control and the same questions the same questions can be uh, of course uh, be stated for the non-local non-linear parabolic system that we have uh, considered before uh, in the case of the non-local non-linear problems uh, it is not clear how to design uh, numerical controls uh, for the moment so uh, some work has to be done uh, in this context and uh, something more can be said on navi stokes i mean of course it is open the global null controllability as i have said with particular conditions but there are some open questions uh, some interesting open questions uh, in the particular case of rectangular domains in the case of rectangular domains some recent works uh, have been uh, performed before by Manu Vilov, uh, Guerrero, Puel, and then by Coron, Narvac. Uh, in the case of the rectangular domain, as I said, uh, uh, it has been proved that if we uh, introduce some perturbations to the equation, we can get uh, boundary global null control. Uh, this has been uh, worked, has uh, been obtained by uh, uh, several people uh, recently. So in that case, it is expected, expected that something better than the general case uh, could, be, could be done. Finally, uh, let us consider for a moment the uh, full Businex system. The full Businex system is this one. Uh, excuse me, here there is a mistake. It could be, it should be uh, dy times uh, gradient of y plus u, okay? There is a plus, there is a missing plus here. Uh, for the full Businex system, we have a quadratic in the gradient term in the right hand side of the temperature. Uh, many times this term is neglected, but the full Businex system includes this term. Well, 
uh, this is very interesting because for this system, again, local result is okay. Again, local result is okay. Uh, the presence of this term does not affect to the validity of the uh, result in the local uh, case. Uh, the local new controllability is okay. However, we don't have any large time null control for this system, to my knowledge. Large time null control means that you let uh, the time passes and after a long time, uh, you get something that is near to zero and then you apply the local result. Well, there's no evidence of uh, uh, the validity of this method uh, in the case of the full Cinex system. And uh, of course, it is open for the moment at least uh, if uh, with navel sleep conditions, global null control before uh, it works, uh, is satisfied, uh, global null control is satisfied for this system. Maybe, maybe uh, this has a, a connection with uh, some results by Bulisek, Pfizer, and Malek from uh, uh, 20 or two or 2012, uh, where uh, they obtained a global existing system of this kind only in the case uh, uh, of navy sleep conditions. So uh, maybe there's a connection to the lack of a global uh, existence of this system uh, when direct light conditions are imposed. Uh, but I think that it's interesting to, to, to look at this system and to uh, wonder whether or not global null controllability holds as in the case of the navi stokes or uh, the not full, uh, the incomplete uh, Businex system. Okay, I'm going to finish now. Thank you very much uh, again for uh, your invitation to, uh, to this meeting. Thank you so much, Dr. Fernandez Cara for your excellent presentation. Now it's time for your question. Well, I, uh, I have a question. Uh, could you comment on Hadamard uh, global inverse fashion theorem? Okay. Yes. This, this is a uh, uh, this is an interesting uh, uh, open question too, because uh, I, I I'm going back to the quasi-linear system that is uh, maybe the most uh, uh, simple uh, of all the cases I have considered uh, here. Uh, what we have done is to rewrite the system, the null controllability problem as an equation of this kind, f of y v equal to uh, zero, why not? What is f? What is f? f of y v is equal to f of yv has two components. The first component is this equation minus v, okay? And the second component is y at zero, at time zero. And we try to invert uh, this function f. Unfortunately, we are only uh, able to apply uh, local inversion because uh, what do we need to have global inversion? To have a uh, Hadamard, uh, uh, like uh, inversion uh, uh, for this system. We should need uh, first uh, to know that f prime, f prime of yv is an isomorphism from x to y for any yv. So first we have to be sure that the derivative of f uh, is an isomorphism from x to y, from x on to y, from x on to y. And the derivative of f is the application that uh, associates to every uh, couple uh, z, w, uh, something like this, but linearized. So we should be able to solve for any coefficient here, for any coefficient here, we should be able to solve, to be able to show, uh, we, we should uh, be able to show that the, for any coefficient that is here, the uh, null controllability problem is solvable. This is the first, the first thing that we have to do in order to uh, be sure that F prime is invertible. 
And the second thing that we need is a bound, a bound of the solution of the linear problem in terms of uh, y and v. Uh, a uniform bound, for example, would serve. We, we, we would need to know that if we linearize at any y bar, at any y bar, then the linearized problem has a solution. The null contrariety problem for the linearized equation has a solution and that the solution is uniformly bounded, all this. But uh, this is very difficult to show because the bounds, the bounds of the solution to the problem depends on estimates of parabolic kind that involve not only A, A is bounded, but not only A, but also derivatives of this function. And in the derivatives of the function, there are derivatives of A, okay, the derivatives of A are bounded, but multiplied by the derivative of Y. So it is very difficult to show the, the, the estimate, an estimate that would be needed in order to apply a global inversion theorem. And this is the situation too for the Navier-Stokes and for the Boussinet system, of course, and also for the uh, uh, non-local, uh, non-linear problem. So this is the difficulty. We don't have uh, any uh, tool to uh, prove that the linearized problems at any coefficient are uniformly, uh, the solution to the linearized problem are uniformly uh, bounded in the good space. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, any question? More question? Silvain, Silvain, I, oh. Yes, thank you. So uh, thank you, Enrique, for, for this very nice talk. Uh, I just had a, a question regarding the numerics for the control of the heat equation. So you were saying that introducing weight uh, seems to give less oscillating controls. Uh, so I'm guessing that uh, the control then is, is smooth. Do you have, uh, uh, well, probably this is what you have observed numerically. But do you have a, a theoretical proof of that? Well, uh, I think uh, that needs to work. Huh? A lot of work is needed, but uh, yes, uh, in fact, uh, it is not written explicitly here, but we need smooth controls here in this, uh, in this space in order to assert that the good uh, application uh, uh, is as we want it. So we uh, have derived, uh, I mean, uh, we have to put here estimates satisfied by the solution to linear problems, uh, essentially. Uh, in the uh, estimates that we have to put here, uh, V is included. So uh, this is a, uh, this is a problem. Okay. okay, but if you just try to minimize the L2 weighted norms of V, so in principle, your control will only be in L2, but what you observe numerically, even for the simple case of, a, of the linear heat equation, it seems to be a smooth control. Yes, right. that's the case. That's the case. And is it proven? Yes. Uh, yes. The estimates that, uh, uh, I don't know if I have explained here. Uh, the estimates that we use here uh, uh, are not estimated uh, come from the fact that this is a solution, that this is a solution of a linear problem, in fact. Yes. So, uh, and the linear problem, the linear problem that I'm considering here, uh, exactly as you say, starts just from this requirement. We only want to minimize this quantity, but the fact, the fact that V and Y are linked through a linear problem, a uh, linear heat equation, uh, make them much more regular than this. Well, I mean, this is also true if you do not add the, the weights. And uh, not sure. It is not regular, right? No, no, not sure because uh, you are using here, uh, how can I say, uh, a coercivity, a coerciveness prop property that depends on the choice of the of the weights. I mean, it is Kahneman what uh, what makes the the the, the, the it's Kalema who, who, who makes the, the play here. If you, uh, if you solve this problem, you 
have uh, automatically that uh, this is bounded and this is bounded. And from mm -hmm. the bounds of L star of P uh, weighted by rho and uh, P and little omega weighted by rho naught, you can get much more information. You also have that P is, uh, has uh, first uh, derivatives in time and second derivatives in time that are bounded uh, in, uh, in the cylinder, in the whole cylinder Q. And uh, this gives you extra regularity for Y. And then if you use this in a, a clever way, uh, let's say, uh, you can get better results for y, for the derivatives of y, for the second derivative of y, and also for v. Okay. So it is Karliman, the, 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 the secret of the, uh, of the extra regularity or property that we get uh, is Karliman, coming from the fact that uh, we are using here good weights. If you put a weight equal to one, you maybe you can get the solution of this, but you don't have uh, much more than this. Mm? Okay. Mm. Oh, okay well, thank uh, you. Kevin Lebar, please. Thank you for, for the talk, Enrique. Uh, yes, I have a, perhaps a technical question on the non-local uh, equation. Why do you assume that uh, A is in uh, W3 infinity? Uh, uh, why, you're asking why I am assuming that A is Yes, yes. W why do you assume uh, uh, some, some uh, extra regularity on A? Well, I have uh, assumed it here because I put uh, something briefly. Uh, I have not, uh, I have not looked at the precise uh, uh, hypothesis that are needed here. I mean, uh, anyway, you need uh, some point you need here a strong uh, uh, regularity of y so at least uh, a has to be c1 or something like this yes at least yes. i have not uh, looked at the okay. at the hypothesis with detail but uh, you're right maybe a equal to y uh, w1 is uh, w1 w1 infinity will be probably sufficient okay thank you in chat, Enrique, or oh, question Abella El Cabuz on chat. Where we find the difficult when we extend this result to the case of a nonlinear control or a multiplier control? Uh, it depends on what uh, mean uh, nonlinear control. Uh, to my knowledge, the most uh, natural uh, choice of a nonlinear control is bilinear control. I mean, it makes sense. It makes sense to consider this equation and a control on the right hand side of the time v times y. Okay, v times y. Well, if uh, we consider this problem, uh, it is out of scope to uh, try to uh, lead uh, y to zero because uh, there is no way. There is no way to lead. Uh, uh, a solution of a problem like this to zero uh, with the coefficient multiplied by unknown. So we have to change the, 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 uh, the point of view. We have to consider another controllability problem. This is the first uh, point. And then uh, if we consider uh, the controllability to the trajectories, which is the natural uh, uh, problem now. If we consider controllability to the trajectories, depending on the trajectory, is it is possible to reduce at first approximation the problem to this one. Because uh, if we consider the controllability to the trajectories, when we derive, uh, we, we, we differentiate with respect to V, we find just this problem with a fixed coefficient here. So uh, in fact, the solution to this problem can serve to, uh, uh, to prove a local, uh, exact controllability to the trajectories for a bilinear uh, uh, control problem. Uh, for other nonlinear uh, occurrences of, uh, of B, I don't know. I don't know. I should have to, uh, to look uh, with detail. Thank you again, Dr. Fernandez-Cara, for your amazing plenary, and see you in another opportunity. Mm -hmm.